Last time on Take One, we said goodbye to some of our anchors and crew as the semester ended. Ben was upset about gas prices, and Jordan wished that the Would You Rather segment had a different host. Today, she just might get her wish. On this week's episode, the switch to Canvas, Boise State football, and the info desk. Also, vaccine bandits and a new segment where we dive into the university television archives. These stories and more up next on Take One. This semester, Boise State is switching over to using Canvas instead of Blackboard. So if you haven't been able to find your assignments yet, then this information might be for you. Canvas is another learning management system like Blackboard for keeping track of everything related to your classes. But Canvas is rumored to be easier for use for both faculty and students. In the testing phase, professors in particular mentioned being a fan of how much less time it takes them to build their courses. But don't worry if you're feeling stressed about this switch. The university is expecting a bit of confusion as everyone gets used to Canvas, and the help desk is always available for anyone who needs help. Just stop on by anytime, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., or Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 5. Now over to you, Jenna. Thanks, Sierra. College football kickoff is finally here. The Boise State Broncos will begin this season's schedule in Orlando, Florida, on September 2nd against UCF. This year is especially important to follow as a Bronco fan because Boise State football alumni Andy Diablos is back and is leading his team as the new head coach. He has also brought an almost entirely new staff with him from his last school, the University of Oregon, creating a new era of Boise State football. Coach Avalos announced less than two weeks prior to kickoff against UCF that junior quarterback Hank Bachmeyer will take the starting position this season with Jack Sears as the second string. As of right now, no outside factors will be traveling with the team to cheer them on in the bounce house due to COVID restrictions in Florida. Of course, updates are being made daily, but as of right now, Jeremiah Dickey will not be traveling to his first away game as the new athletic director of Boise State. I am so excited for this upcoming football season. So as always, go Broncos. Now, over to you, Madeline. Thanks, Jenna. If you have ever been inside of the student union building, you have probably walked by the information desk. With freshman move-in and the start of the school, the first three weeks are the busiest at the desk. But what does the information desk do? The information desk is most known for producing the Bronco ID cards and adding meal plans. They also answer all Boise State phone calls as well as any questions that students, faculty, or visitors may have. The desk is a great place to go for any Boise State question. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Next time you stop by the information desk, make sure to give them a wave. I promise they don't bite. Now over to Jordan and Ryan in the spec studio. Ooh, we're back. Isn't this awesome? How yeah. was your summer? It was great. It was actually really good. You really? Know, especially because I didn't have to see you. Yeah. It was great. It was really great. How was your summer? Uh, it was it was good. Um, I went to my first music festival. Um, yeah, cool. Um, welcome back, Broncos, and a special welcome to all our freshmen. For you freshies to feel more comfortable here, we at BTV have some helpful tips and tricks. First things first, is an absolute must to eat at the BRC, especially the burritos from Carol, right before your class. It is the only way to keep yourself energized during the duration of your class. Speaking of classes, don't bother trying to understand anything. You can totally get away with cramming the night before exams and bringing a cheat sheet in with you. When you're walking to class, you're definitely going to see geese. Go ahead and pet them. They're very friendly. And if they chase you, that just means they like you. If you felt bold and got yourself a fake ID, just know that it will get you into every single bar downtown, especially Grainy's. For all you freshmen that live in Sawtooth, don't bother waiting for the light to change at the intersection. Jaywalking in front of the sub is totally okay and no one ever gets caught. If you need a little time to get away with that special someone of yours, the fourth floor of the library is perfect. And lastly, that long distance high school relationship you're in will last. I promise. We hope you take these tips and tricks very seriously. Welcome to Boise State. 
<clears throat> in early August, a TikToker named Gray Fagan posted a satirical news spoof video claiming to have evidence of vaccine bandits terrorizing the unvaccinated in Los Angeles, California. The video quickly amassed over 6 million views and more than a few people are taking the information as fact. The video contained a photoshopped article from the Los Angeles Times and a surveillance video of a man in black running up to a woman and injecting her. The bandits would have apparently hand out vaccination cards with the name of the vaccine, the date, and the place of the injection, like Hollywood Boulevard or a, pa a Costco parking lot. The video concluded with Fagan insisting that the bandits will leave notes at the homes of victims, saying they will be back in two weeks to finish the job if they were given a two-dose vaccine. The comments on the TikTok were quite assertive, stating that there was proof of this in the article in the creator's bio. But when you click on the link, it ends up just being a rickroll. Well, we got to give it to the guy. It was very well thought out. So you're in California for the summer. Um, did you see any of those vaccine bandits down there in like a Costco parking lot or anywhere like that? I mean, that? I saw some crazy people in California, especially in parking lots, but I didn't see a vaccine bandit. That'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, California. Just, I mean, it's, else. yeah, it's either California, Texas, or Florida, I swear to God. Something else. Now, it seems as if I've been kicked off my own segment, which I'm sure uh, Jordan is thrilled about, but there's only one person who I think could do it better than me. Take it away, Ben. How's it going, everybody? We are outside of the comm building here, and I know our eyes look like they're closed, but I promise you we're looking right at you. We are here about to do our little segment called uh, Would You Rather, straight from the mind of your least favorite Take One host, Ryan Seeker. All right, well, we are out here, like I said. My name is Ben Luca. And I'm Kyle Curry. And we're going to bring on our first guest over here. Totally not staged, never met this person before in my life. How's it going, Daniel? Doing good. Uh, How are you? Oh. So, for the first Would You Rather question, would you rather wear a Teletubby costume for every class you go to or never be able to wear any form of shoes to go to class for the yeah. rest of the year? Then just rather go barefoot, no shoes, wear some sick socks. Interesting choice. Okay. okay. All right, well, uh, I got one for you, too. All right. And uh, it's, uh, would you rather be stuck in a closet with your least favorite person for three days or run a marathon? I think run a marathon. I wouldn't survive with my sister in the same room. Your sister? Yeah, sister. yeah she annoys me a lot. <laughs> yeah. All right, well. All right, well, thank you, uh, guy I've never met before. You, you take care. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, we can bring on our next guest. Again, totally random, not staged at all. All right, go ahead and start us off. All righty. My next would you rather question, would you, gra you, would you rather graduate college right now with all the skills and experience you have or restart college at the age of 18? Well, it's not, it's not oh, gosh. Um, probably graduate right now. It's, uh, to go back to 18 would be a little bit rough. <laughs> not sure I want to relive that one. Don't blame me there. All right. Well, let me remember what my question was. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, would you rather not be able to watch TV or movies or YouTube ever again or only see everything in black and white probably only see everything in black and white yeah i mean that's like half the movies anyway so yeah that's a that good point sense. yep cool all right well that's all our time so i'll see you later we got one more guest Let's bring them on in come on over here oh yeah we need like an applause machine or something yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I got a doozy of a would you rather for you. Would you rather live in your most favorite cartoon or be the main character in your favorite sitcom? Mm. Probably sitcom. Um, I don't want to live in any cartoon. I feel uh, like that. What, what sitcom? Uh, I don't know. What? There's a lot of good ones. Um, I'm just going to instinctively say um, Phil of the Future. Okay, that's actually a good one. That's a good choice. Uh, All right, yeah. well, this is the last question of the day. Uh, would you rather go to BYU or just end it right now? <sighs> oh, man. Um, that, that's actually a real doozy. Um, I'll go to BYU. Uh, okay, we'll get the out hell out of here. Out of curiosity. That's it. No, nope, we're done. I'll see you. <laughs> and uh, that's all the time we have today. Like I said, I'm Ben Luca. And I'm Kyle Curry. It was great, great seeing y'all. Hope you feel the same. See you later. Ryan, 
have a would you rather question for you. Oh, okay. I love this game. It's so much fun. Yeah, so would you rather <clears throat> quit News and Crane forever? Okay. Or quit News and Crane forever? That's the same thing. You just, what, do you just not want me to be here? Right. Yeah, that's the point. Thank you. Yeah. Um, quit News and Crane forever in case you missed that part. Okay, I'll yeah. just, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to quit. That's rude. That's really mean that you said that. Disappointing a lot of us over here. Okay, well, now we're going to take a look at some <laughs> old university television content in our new segment, Flashback. Hello, and welcome to the cold room. The cold room. With our host, Thomas Atkins, and co-host, Jen Kirk. Cold room, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we need to bring balance back to America. I'm Thomas Atkins. And I'm Jennifer Kirk, and harassment solves nothing. Nothing. I, 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 I'm going to have to disagree with that. You know, but um, you enjoy harassing people. I, I might. I, I, it's not that I that I enjoy harassing people. It's just that a uh, certain level of harassment is necessary to keep and restore balance. I don't think I agree with that. I, I but it doesn't surprise me that you enjoy harassing people. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, today with us, Gabe Garcia Guerrero Hernandez Sancho. Not his real name. All right. Uh, whoa, whoa. Where are you coming up with this? I thought that was your authentic name. From. Authentic Did you read that name? off a cereal box? No. I, you know, I thought I saw that on the credits. What no, is no. your real name, Gabe? Uh, my full name is Gabriel Jesus Garcia. Jesus, wow. see. Jesus. Not nothing wrong with having a middle it's name. It's like Jesus. almost Jesus, but it's Mexican Jesus. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a wonderful name. Well, thank you. I, I like it. Yeah. Fits you well. I, I think it does. I don't know. And you're an illegal. No. No, I'm not uh, illegal. Why would you say something like that? Well, I thought, I mean, <laughs> he's... I want to hear the explanation for this. I mean, I just, you know, assume that if he's... Are you afraid not, of illegals, Thomas? I, I don't I know. I think he may be. Are you? I'm not afraid of illegals. I'm just saying that it's, it's just unbalanced. And up here, I think it's more Caucasian that lives up here. But uh, well, I was filming for a wedding one time, and this guy once asked me. With electronic equipment? Yeah, with you electronic You know how to use that? Yeah, I do. I do, just as much as you do. Okay. I was like, well, why would you ask if I'm from Mexico? He's like, well, why would you ask if I'm from Europe? I said, because you're white? Yeah, same reason. Well, see, this kind of leads me to my, a, a good question. Why wouldn't you want to be around your colored folks? <gasps> I mean, like the people. I, I didn't mean that. Kind of came out wrong. The people that kind of look. Church. The people that kind of look like you, in a way. Well, Thomas, you know, when you turn off the light, we're all the same color. We're all the same. So color. See? true. <laughs> well, you do have some very catchy pickup lines. We were talking about those a little bit earlier. I know, Jen. L Sorry, you want to use one? Uh, okay, Jen. Yes. Do you work at Subway? I do not. Because every time I see you, I get a f Oh, God. See, this and brings me to my next point. <laughs> Vulgarity. These c the me the c what are we calling them? I forgot. Tan people. To our life. Hey, Thomas, I got a question for you, though. OK. If you have this, I, I, don't, I don't think you're racist or anything, but right, you know, no, this I, thing I'm with Mexicans. He's I'm sounding I'm pretty racist. To, I'm, no, I'm just trying to sound a little racist, out. but okay. I'm, one not, I'm, I'm not offended at all, because it's you. However, um, is there, do you, do you have issues with yourself? With my white self, yeah. my inner white self? I mean, you were telling Jen and I earlier about your home situation, how you raise chickens and stuff. You know, Mexicans raise chickens? They do? Yep. Well, then, so I'm more, in a way, I closer think, to the Mexican. So, yes, so I think you'd be surprised to find out how much. So then I can much stereotype Mexican you and say, oh, because you own chickens, you're from Mexico. But I don't have any roosters, though, right? I mean, I thought. Right, but I, I think your point is looking at somebody and saying, because you're tan, you're from Mexico. Exactly. Same thing. If someone said, oh, Thomas, you have you chickens. You have chickens. You're Get the hell out of my country right that's away. not fair. So I guess the question is, why does it matter if we need balance in America? Thank you. I'm Jennifer Kirk, and it does matter, and harassment solves nothing. Thomas Atkins, I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> 
Thank you for watching The Cold Room. The Cold Room. Burr. Wow, what what an interesting flashback that was. That was, that was something. That was something. You know, honestly, yeah. Ryan, Thomas kind of reminds me a little bit of you in a way. You know, you both huh. just love getting under people's skin, you know? <laughs> you really you really mean that. I mean, yeah. I just see some similarities okay, there, I so, gotta say. Uh, okay, well, this brings me to my question. So do you think harassment solves things? N no. I... Okay, let's just move on. Let's, it we, seems we can, like, uh, we'll talk about this later. You just keep harassing me. It's and okay. uh, it's it's not harassment. You know what you did. I didn't do anything, Jordan. Go, just go I've on. Never go done on with the segment. You, let's yeah, go. Okay, we're gonna send it back because uh, now back over to Sarah, Jenna, and Madeline in the 360 studio. Warning: the story I'm about to read has mentions of upsetting and triggering topics such as sexual harassment and suicide. Please feel free to not watch this if it brings you discomfort. The state of California is suing the video game development com company Activision Blizzard for violations of civil rights and equal pay laws. After a two year long investigation, Blizzard is being labeled as having a frat boy culture. Highlights include male employees being drunk at work, groping other employees, passing around sex toys and sharing nude photos of female employees which led to the suicide of one employee. Only two employees are specifically mentioned in the lawsuit, former president of Blizzard, J. Allen Bratch, and former lead designer, Alex Afasabi. Afasabi was let go from the company in June 2020. However, his actions of sexual harassment were widely known by all upper management in Blizzard as far back as 2013. J. Allen Bratch has been released following the lawsuit. This, however, is not enough as employees and fans alike begin to strike and protest the company, demanding major change. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for all the crew and writers for this episode. I'm Sierra Lewis. I'm Madeline Molitor. And I'm Jenna Vinamonti. Join us on the next episode where we discuss the new addition to Albertson's Library and mask policies on campus for this fall semester. We'll see you next time on Take One. Ha <laughs> ha